Now, when you look up alternatives to these shells, obviously it's loaded with something special. Obviously, if you got just the empty cartridges, they'd be much cheaper, and I'll show them show them to you in a minute. But let's look at the cheaper alternatives. These are the Magtech cartridges. They're made to use a pistol primer instead of a shotgun primer. They're thin wall brass, so you get the full bore. And because they're using a pistol primer, you have a lot of room in them because they're originally designed for black powder. To make them tolerate higher pressures, one of the things that can be done is to give it a base wad made of plastic or brass to make it to where the cartridge can holler, tolerate more pressure and you would use smokeless powder. But people have already shown that you can load these with smokeless powder. As long as the gun's well designed, it's not going to hurt anything. And they're, again, just as reloadable. As long as you don't crimp the mouth, you're fine. Seal it up with something else like hot glue, and you have a reloadable shell. And for some of you out there, a sustainable hunting capability is very important. Now, as you can see from the price tag there, they work out at $33 for 25 shells. And they're two and a less than a half. Next, here's the MagTac again, and they're selling them for 33 Okay? And uh, again, it's 25 shells. Again, here we go again, 34 for 25 shells. Again, it's the same shells. And if you look at the zoomed in images, you notice they're not the two and the slightly under half. They're about two and a half. And here again, uh, same thing, and these are even more expensive. This is a different company. They're not running Magtex, apparently. But they're trying to compete. Now, of course, immediately in my head, I think of flare guns using really cool brass cartridges, PUBG, all that kind of fun stuff, and also loading them with something non-lethal and uh, having reloadable brass because it's kind of cool. But again, they're all using the, I say, non-standard pistol primer unnecessarily. And yes, you can see people altering them to where you can do otherwise. And of course, there's, again, you can get the base wad of another shell and push it in and make it to where it will work just like standard shells. Next, here's the MagTech again, and it's giving you the information showing it's... Now, this is the worst case scenario here, just about. It's under a buck fifty a piece, no matter how you buy them. Okay. Now, that's expensive by shotgun shell capacity standards, and you can reload cheap shotgun holes that you can find out of the shooting range. But these are more reloadable. They're kind of cool. Okay. And because it's all one sealed metal bit, it's all made out of one piece of metal like a standard cartridge for a pistol is. It's just scaled up. You can get away with having it work a lot better. There's only two places, the opening and where the primer goes in, that you could have to seal anything. And you can seal it with fingernail polish or even wax. And here's $8 a pop. They're not any much different. They're just slightly longer than 2.5 inches. 5 eighths is a little bit longer than 2.5, you know, there. And these are thin wall, and they use 11-gauge wads instead of 12-gauge wads. Okay, they're like half a millimeter thick walls or whatever. Again, they're available, but uh, what are you getting out of it? Now, what if you want something bigger? Like, I actually wanted something smaller. I wanted two-inch limited shells because I want to make flare gun length because that'll fit everything. Or if you want to make something bigger, like 12-gauge magnums at three and a half inches or three inches. Now, here's where we get to my little project I've come to a conclusion about. If anybody cares... You can buy for 21 bucks. This is the lowest price I could find commonly. Not the lowest price, just the lowest one you can easily find by shopping around. It's 50 centimeter or 500 millimeter long, 20 millimeter outer diameter, thin wall brass. It's about a millimeter thick or less. Now, when you look up what actually is the size and people using it for things, if they take out a set of calipers or whatever, they find out that it's almost perfect diameter for the mouth of a shotgun shell. That's very important. It doesn't have to be the base. It just has to fit. And if you chop it into 3.3 inch long pieces, you get six pieces approximately. Not three and a half, but you get six brass tubes for 350 each out of 21 bucks. If you chop them into shorter ones at under two and a half inches, literally what you were looking at, you get eight cases and you get them at 262. Now, obviously, it's worthless if you're making short cartridges. 
However, if I'm making them two inches, then I end up with a situation where it's getting near the price tag for a authentic brass uh, shotgun shell that's two inch limited for flare guns, but it's still not worth it. I could just buy the other ones. And well, how do I do this? Well, I go to the range, get range scrap pure brass bases. They're hard to find, but it has the right hole in it for the primer. And then I stick in a base wad made out of an 8 by 18 millimeter, uh, literally 5 or 18 millimeter, uh, 5 or 6 millimeter inner diameter, 18 millimeter outer diameter, $2 washer, conical or straight, doesn't matter. And I put it into the tube after I jam it into here. Now, what good is that? Well, I can sweat solder the thing shut by using solder, uh, I'm not solder, but... Uh, tinning flux, which is tin-infused flux, and then chemically strip it after I've soldered it. And I can even include a thin layer of solder on the inner diameter here, right where that forms the rim. And I can sweat this thing together to be a really dandy three or three and a half inch shell. And I could get up for, well, at that point, it would be bordering on four dollars each to do the three and a half inch shells. But nobody sells them. There's a market for them. And it'd be four dollars a piece instead of eight, which is what one of the companies was selling them at. Now that, and again, they didn't make it long enough. And it would have an authentic, real, maybe even a high brass base for duck hunters. And it would be made out of something really durable, almost millimeter thick brass. And I could also go in and ream the interior, change its diameter. So this is kind of a thing I was thinking of doing, you know, for an Etsy style thing, mostly because Etsy is where you find all the freaking brass bases, because they keep doing that. For art purposes, sorry, I'm going to make fun of them. But anyway, the idea was to make it available in these trying times. Yes, I would be exploiting people who want to be able to reload, but honestly, they wouldn't have to do the work. And I know how to do this in such a way that it's soldered to the point that it's tougher than a standard shotgun shell, but it would never be as tough as a standard Magtech shell. They're already designed to be shotgun shells. Sorry for peek ahead there. So, I mean, we're talking about if I did this the right way, if I used actual pipe tubing to make our base wads, blah, 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 blah. Um, I could get away with making these for about four a pop for three and a half inch tube shells that would have, you know, your, you know, Fiocchi or your Winchester base on it. And it would look cool. And I could even make the PUBG two inchers and sell them for PUBG geeks. I could even make them look like the authentic flare gun cartridges that have that neck down, that step in it, and sell them and exploit all the PUBG people. Let's just say it, I'd be exploiting people. But it'd be a way to make money. Okay. Or I could just buy cartridges that are completely functional and are literally made for shotguns for nearly half the cost and just leave it? I mean, yeah, really. In fact, I did the calculations. It'd be eminently cheaper to do it that way. So this is a dead project, but it's kind of cool. It would be pretty, but it's not of any practical value by most people's standards. Now we're going to get to the secondary subject. I'm going to F11 this. A comp I found a company making or selling these. This is a flare gun someone made. Honest to goodness, it is. And it's a semi-automatic manual, double action trigger, whatever you want to call it. It's a double action pistol that uses a magazine that fires flares. Now, you may have noticed it looks a little weird. The front part of it, the entire outer casing, actually flies out, and it leaves a button behind that holds in here. It's a semi-rimmed cartridge, okay? That's to keep it from moving forward when it's hit with a firing pin. That's all it's for. But after you do that, when you finish it, that little space up there, that is where the butt end of it flies out because the spring presses up on it and does it. It's an extremely simple, simple uh, semi-automatic. Now, the only way that this would work with a normal gun would be you'd have to have an open top for no support for the shell or some of the design. So this wouldn't work for a firearm. But it is an example of somebody finding a way to make something kind of cool. Now, I wanted to compare this to something. And again, these are rare. Nobody makes the cartridges. And I'm going to say up front, I can't make a cartridge like this exactly the same. So let's see what I would do about that. This is what the cartridges look like. It's a semi-rimmed base, and this one's color differenced. And this is what they, it has a little plastic grommet, 
And the base of it just holds the equivalent to basically a shotgun primer, or maybe maybe a blank out of a uh, you know a 22, and or something like that. Or it could even be a 50 BMG primer, just a thin walled one. And when it fires, this part here, this colored part here, is the actual entire projectile. That's the flare. Now I want to point out there are other companies that make flares that are smaller diameter, very specific, that would fit oddly enough, down in the middle of this, but the reason for this was to make the mechanism semi-auto, so you could just pull the trigger and have five shots. You could do color-coded sequences. But what's left is this piece. Now, a reloadable version of this is contradictory because you'd start off with this and have to make the flare. But what if I could make one that is reloadable? Now we're going to do with the example in this video. That's an ex exploded view of the DM-13 19x33 cartridge. It's a 33 millimeter long cartridge-ish thing, and this entire front end here is the minimum length. And when it's fired, about half of it's gone. And the base of it is very similar, although it's smaller, which actually is an advantage, to the base of a 50 BMG. So you could start off with a 50 BMG uh, case bottom, which has an inner bore diameter of, or, or case space in it that's about 17 millimeters. That's important. It's made of brass, and you could mill it down from the 20 and a half millimeter almost down to the 19 and a third millimeter that this uses very easily. And you could make it to where it's like the previous one where it's this button bottom, but I had a different idea. Mill it to where it matches exactly the shape, and then just simply cut it off to where it's just as long as this, but shaped like this. So basically from here down, it would look the same. And then what you would do is you'd have a fake topper to it that would be glued onto a standard flare cartridge uh, insert. They make flares for the, uh, well, for uh, blank firing guns that are about 15 millimeter, which means it would fit inside of the 50 BMG case base. And then to make that action work, you'd wrap the top of it with a fake top that would fly off with it. I just thought of that, but that was interesting to me. Now, this is the reason it's not going to work. Number one, it wouldn't be authentic. No collector would buy them. Number two, it's unproven and untested. Number three, it wouldn't make this mechanism here work exactly the same way. It would eject the pieces. It would probably work, probably, but it wouldn't be as reliable because it's not perfectly designed. Again, I mean, the cartridges are being sold for anywhere from $5 a pop to 100 each. This is a major inducement for someone like me to try to create such a thing. However, going from that to using a 50 BMG base and coming up with a thing you see on the right, a fake version, a DM-13 based on the 50 BMG cartridge, it doesn't seem like it's going to work out well at all, and I'm not going to bother with it. But it was an interesting idea, so here's the information. Um, but it would require you to do some engineering. Now, of course, the other one is, you're probably already thinking of it, gee, that's a three-inch casing, and it's actually three, almost four inches. Gee, why won't we just make shotgun shells out of these? 50 BMG cases cost more than the empties for 12-gauge. They're not any improvement, and the diameter here for the primer is also completely wrong, so there's way too much machining and fucking around with it. Again, Oath Tango empty casings, they're still just a little over two and a half versus, what, 225 for a case? So that's why I did the video. Number one, it was an interesting project to research over many months. It was fun, but the fun's gone, number one. Number two, not much point in doing it. Number three, I'm not going to redo these, even though I thought of doing it. It was an interesting project. And, yeah, I'd like to own one of these, but it has no practical value for me. Except for, well, that's another video. And, yes, you can do the Etsy method for making brass tubes. And if you made them three and a half inch magnums, which aren't available, it would be just barely cost effective. It would be three bucks, four bucks a cartridge, instead of what other people charge. Eight. And, again, it would be three and a half inch magnums and be over strength necessary for doing the job. But, again, would it be worth it? Anyway, that's all I wanted to do. Just a little bit of sustainability and interesting things on brass cartridges and stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.